In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem called naming and drawing aldehydes. There are two versions of this problem. One version gives you three molecules and asks you to come up with their name. Another version of the problem, which is much easier, gives you the molecule's uh, name and asks you to draw its structure from its name. Let's work on this one first. I think it's the easiest one to solve. Step number one is to find the longest chain of carbon atoms that includes the aldehyde group, which is this group right here. And step number two is to number that chain so that the aldehyde is on carbon number one. The aldehyde is always going to be on carbon number one every single time. And that's going to be important when we name the molecule. Once we have the carbon chain numbered, we can locate and name the substituents. This molecule has a methyl group on carbon number three. And then last but not least, we're going to say the prefix for the five carbons in the chain, which is pentan, pentan. If this was a five carbon, just a regular five carbon chain, we'd call it pentane. We're gonna drop that last E and replace it with AL for aldehyde. Notice that we didn't say the location of the aldehyde group, and that is because, as I said about a 30 seconds ago, it is always located on carbon number one. So we don't have to say where it is because it's always on carbon number one. By definition, aldehydes are always at the end of a carbon chain, and when we number our carbon chain, we're always going to look, we're always going to put an aldehyde on carbon number one every time. So here's our second example: one, two, three, four, five. Locate our and name our substituents. This molecule has two substituents. One of them is on carbon number two, the other is on carbon number five, and they are both hydroxy groups. So this we get to say two five di hydroxy. Whenever we have two identical substituents, we can lump them together and just put the little di prefix in front of them. That means that we have two of that identical substituent. This is also a five carbon aldehyde, so this is also a pentanal. And then last but not least, up here, here's our longest chain of carbons. Always number it so the aldehyde is carbon number one. We have a methyl. And we have, again, two hydroxies. We're going to name the hydroxies first because we uh, order our substituents. We put our substituents in alphabetical order in the molecule's name. H comes before methyl. So here we have 3, 4, dihydroxy, because there are two of them, 2 methyl. And this is a four carbon chain, so it is a butanal. Now let's just imagine uh, if the problem was the other version of this problem where you're given the name of the molecule and you're asked to come up with its structure. In this type of problem, I always like to start at the end first. Um, butanal tells me that I have four carbons and the al part tells me that I have an aldehyde and the aldehyde is always on carbon number one. That's just how it works. Then I'm gonna go with my substituents. I have on carbon three and four, two hydroxies. One, two, here's three. So I need to put a hydroxy here and here's four, put a hydroxy there. Uh, also on carbon number two, I have a methyl. And once I get all those substituents in place, then I'm just gonna add as many hydrogens as I need for every carbon to have four bonds. Alex probably wouldn't like the way this structure is drawn because it's not very pretty, but we could just clean this up, turn this into condensed notation like that, CH. This we would want to write as a CH2, and there, now that's a good looking molecule. 